Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Or welcome if you're new. Hello everybody, my name is Crystal. I am Crystal's Bookish Life and I make bookish videos a few times a week, mostly about romance or fantasy books or romanticy or historical romance, but I talk about all kinds of books. So this is a video that actually was inspired by one of my patrons on our Discord. She was asking for slow burn romance book recommendations, which is my all-time favorite. I love a slow burn romance. It's my favorite thing in the world. I love it so freaking much. And I realized I don't think that I've actually made a slow burn romance video recommendation before. So here we are with some of my all-time favorite slow burn romances, and I hope that you enjoy them too. So the first one that I want to talk about is Ravishing the Heiress. So Ravishing the Heiress is one of the most beautiful historical romance books that I have ever read, and it is so delicious deliciously angsty. The tension in here, the slow buildup, the angst will make your stomach hurt in the best way. So this book is about Millie, who is a wealthy heiress, and she is going to be marrying Fitzhugh, who really needs to marry somebody with some money because he doesn't have any of his own. So it's a, an arranged marriage in that aspect, which is not uncommon in historical romance at all. But the problem is, is that the two of them work out this deal that they will be married in name only and they'll share finances, you know, she will have a safe and comfortable home and a husband and a potential child because they are going to get married. But because she is so young, they're going to wait eight years until they consummate the marriage. They're going to get together just enough time to get her pregnant and then they're going to lead their own separate lives while still being married. Now the problem with this is that Fitzhugh is in love with somebody else, and Millie is in love with Fitz. So you see the angst, the setup in here, and honestly, I will say that typically I don't love a pining heroine in my romance books. I don't want to read about her pining after him for years and years. Him pining after her, yeah, I'll read. I love that. I'll eat that up every time, right? But I really don't love when the heroine pines for the hero. However, I will say this book was just so exquisitely done with the way that the tension and the connection between them was building throughout time. Through all of these little interactions, you could see Fitz, who was really growing to care for her. Their romance built and developed so slowly. Oh, it was so beautiful. This is one of my favorite historical romances, but I will say this book can be pretty polarizing. Some people find the angst to be too high. Some people find it to be too painful to be in Millie's head. I found it perfect. I found it beautiful. And uh, the slow burn in here was tremendous. So I highly recommend this book to you. Okay, so now the next book that I have to recommend is Love Lettering by Clay by Kate Claiborne. Kate Claiborne, I feel in general, does slow burn ran romances really, really well. I absolutely love the way she gets her characters to connect in some very unique situations, and then she's able to build a very realistic, very tension-filled and emotional-filled romance. Like, because it has, I mean, to have really good tension in a slow burn, you have to have an equal blend, I feel like, of emotional development where they're longing for that person in a real emotional way, while still having all of the desire and the, like, the chemistry, the heat of the tension element, right? And I think that Kate Claiborne leans a little harder into the emotional aspect, the longing, which is something that I really, really love. But the slow burn element definitely is there. And this book is a very unique premise. It's with our heroine, who is known for creating these very beautiful custom hand lettered journals for the New York upper class. And she also has this strange gift of being able to like see signs of couples and sort of predict if they're going to make it or not. So one day she's meeting with her clients and they're engaged to be married, she's doing some lettering for their wedding, and she guesses, she immediately knows, like, oh, they are not going to last because she sees some sign. And lo and behold, they don't last. And our hero finds out that she had guessed, you know, like our heroine sort of lets it slide, lets it known that she knew they weren't going to because of the sign. And so the hero comes to track her down and he's like, how did you know? How did you know that things weren't going to work out? They end up working together on a project. They're thrown into forced proximity. And the, this is one of the most beautiful, slow building romances that I have ever read. Kate Claiborne really knows how to stretch that tension and just keep you engaged and on the hook and wondering if this, this couple is going to get together ever. It's so beautifully well done. 
Okay, so now this next one is a very popular romance that I feel like is often talked about as a slow burn. And no, it's not Mariana Zapata. I don't have any Mariana Zapata on this list because I feel like if you are looking for slow burn romances, you have probably already exhausted her list and you're looking for something else. So just a little caveat that if you want a slow burn romance, Mariana Zapata is the queen of them. My personal favorites are Culty and From Lukoff with Love. And honestly, any of her books are going to fit the bill for a really good slow building romance that takes a lot of time. So this is all, this is all, none of this is Mariana Zapata because I imagine that if you know, want slow burn, you've already read her, you know about her. So this book is a fantasy romance and it is called Radiance by Grace Draven. This is one of the most beautiful and romantic fantasy romances that I've ever read in my life. It is with our hero, Brishan, who is from the Wraith King world. It's like a different type of race than humans. They have horns. They are not seen as beautiful to humans. They are monstrous looking. And then we have Ildiko, who is our human heroine. And she she feels like he is monstrous and ugly, and he feels like she is ugly as well. And it's just the perfect, perfect pairing of these two who have their, these preconceived ideas of beauty and what that means. And then they really get to meet and know each other on like a soul and a friendship level that builds and develops into true love so that they find every aspect of one another beautiful in the end. These two are thrown together into an arranged marriage in the hopes of having peace between the two countries and a political alliance and trade alliance so that things will work out between, you know, what is going to be like a war that will come to play in future books. So. I absolutely love this romance. It is one of my personal favorites, as I'm sure it is many of yours. And if you have not yet discovered Grace Draven for fantasy romance, this is the perfect place to start with her. This book is so achingly beautiful and romantic, and I haven't read it in years, and now I'm wanting to reread it just by talking about it with you all. So now this next one is a contemporary romance by an author that I really, really enjoy, and it is A Deal with the Devil by Elizabeth O'Rourke. This is the beginning of one of her contemporary romance series. These are individual standalone romances in an interconnected world. You don't need to read these in order at all. This one is my favorite in the series, and it surprises me because this has a lot of things that I typically don't like. So that's saying something when an author can take things that aren't usually for me and make them really work. So this book has a surgeon hero. He is a billionaire. He's extremely wealthy and he is so grumpy. He is grumpy with everyone. And our heroine is looking for a job. She desperately needs a job. She needs some finances. And she finds out that this surgeon's assistant is taking a leave of absence. And, you know, she's like, why don't you go and take my place as his assistant? He pays really well. And uh, she doesn't really let her know that he's kind of a major pain to work with. So she goes to take the job because she desperately needs it. And she quickly finds out that this guy is a bit of a jerk. He is not nice. He is not kind. He is not warm. He is cold and grumpy and just everything you would think that a billionaire jerk face hero would be is this guy, right? And the thing that makes this work so well for me is that I absolutely love when a cold hero crumbles and softens only for the heroine. Like, I love and adore that so much. I love that. And that is exactly what happens here because they're thrown into forced proximity through their working relationship, of course. And he starts to see and appreciate everything that she is doing for him. And not just because she's doing things for him, but because like he continuously dishes out hate and all these tasks to have her do. And she never backs down. She never like throws it back in his face, but she does sort of do these things that make him realize that she's pretty formidable in her own right. And she also seems to care about me. So this was deliciously done a very, very excellent slow burn, and I will say that this one has the tension that ends up being like scorching hot when they finally get together. Okay, this next one is a fun one that I don't hear talked about too much anymore. It is Act Your Age, Eve Brown. I adore this book so much. This is by Talia Hibbert. This is a contemporary romance, and Talia Hibbert writes some of the best dialogue with the best characters with such fun, enjoyable, realistic feeling, but swoony romances, and this one just is one of my favorites. So we have Eve, our heroine, who is a chaotic mess, a disaster in her own words, and she is basically a party girl. She really doesn't do a good job of hitting deadlines. She's not really making much of her life. And after she sort of sends this wedding into a disaster, her parents are like, okay, you know what? We're done. We're done. You need to shape up or ship out and we're not going to finance your life anymore. And so the heroine ends up looking for a job. She goes to this bed and breakfast who is owned by our hero, who is a neurodivergent hero. And she is applying to be a chef. And the man, the man, the hero, the hero in this book, the man, 
he is a man of order. Like, he needs everything to be a certain way. He does not want chaos. He doesn't want this whirlwind of this purple-haired woman in his life, even though he finds her so beautiful. He's like, um, no. I'm not gonna hire you. Goodbye. Get out of my life. You are everything I don't want. And then something happens where she accidentally hits him with her car. <laughs> accidentally. And now he can't work the bed and breakfast. He's got a broken arm. And so she steps in to work it for him and they fall in love. It's so beautiful. It's so fun. It's so good. The chemistry between these two, the romantic moments are so beautiful. I love this book so much. Okay, so now this next one is another historical romance and it is a new release and not very many people have read this. This doesn't have very many ratings on Goodreads. It just came out at the end of September. So it hasn't been out for very long, but I need more people to read this. This is The Finest Print by Erin Langston, and this is such a great slow burn. This has so many moments of near misses, of realizations about the other person, of thinking, of longing. Like, this has everything you want in a slow burn romance, and especially in a historical setting. We have our heroine, who is the daughter of a chief justice in London. She has aspirations of being a novel writer. She wants to have a career. She has just sort of gotten out of a marriage that was going to be disastrous, so she has a bit of scandal around her name, and, you know, she's kind of off of the marriage market now, and she's kind of just trying to live her life and hopefully going to publish her book. And our hero is an American who has come to England with the whole purpose of inheriting his uncle's printing press and having a business there. When he arrives, he realizes there is a ton of debt involved with this printing press that he has to clear off before he can have it as his own and make it a business or anything like that. So he's trying to figure out what to do with that. The two of them meet, our hero and heroine, meet and they. he realizes that she wants to be a writer and she realizes that he has a printing press and they work out this arrangement that she will now write Penny Bloods, Penny Dreadfuls essentially, to try and generate some income to save his business and to hopefully get her name out there so she will be a published writer. So over the course of them working together through this, this shared goal that they have, have. They fall in love. It's so, so beautiful. I love watching these two fall in love. I love every single moment when they are together. This book is full of tiny, small, very romantic gestures that if you like those, like the hand flex and Pride and Prejudice, you absolutely must read this book because it is beautiful. Great tension. Beautifully romantic. Probably my favorite on this whole list. Okay, so now the next one is another historical romance, and it is The Duchess Hunt by Lorraine Heath. So this is a book that is part of a series. You don't need to read this in order, but I do think you get more backstory about the Duke in this if you do read the series in order. This is, I believe, like book two or three. So this book has our Duke, who is in desperate need of a duchess. He really, really needs to find a woman to be his duchess and to settle down. He decides that he's going to open up advertisements and let the women who want to be his duchess write him a letter and tell him why they think that they would make a good duchess for this man. So he puts the task of finding a duchess, finding his wife on his personal assistant who happens to be in love with him. So imagine how she feels going through all these notes, trying to find a wife for the man that she loves and like it's so, so fun. I really love Lorraine Heath. She writes romances that are achingly, deeply romantic, very swoony, that are also just full of so much tension and complexity and great, great chemistry. And the setup in this says a lot. This man in here, this hero, takes him a while to realize that she loves him. But when he does, it's absolutely beautiful. So... Okay, and then the last book that I have on my list is one that is not really recommended for slow burn romances, and honestly, I don't feel like it's talked about really much at all on social media, on the bookish social medias, and it is Smooth Talking Stranger by Lisa Kleypas. So this is one of her contemporary romances. This is not a historical. This is part of a series, the Travis Family series. You don't need to read this in order, but again, I feel like you will learn more about the characters if you do. You can definitely read this as a standalone. Every book on this list, most of them are part of series. You can read every single one as a standalone. So we have our hero in here, who is a very wealthy Texas heir, basically, to a cattle fortune. And he's very much known as a playboy of taking what he wants and sort of having his will with a lot of women, however many that will have him. Like, he is a playboy in every sense of the word. And one day, he finds a very angry, beautiful woman on his doorstep with a baby. And the woman is not the mother of the baby, it is the baby's aunt. And she has been left with this baby, who she claims is our hero's, because the mother just sort of left, took off, took off, and leaving 
her child with her sister and now come to the doorstep of the father. So if you like that kind of setup with a surprise baby, I think you will really love this because it's always beautiful and wonderful to see the hero really step up and want to be a parent to this child that he didn't even know existed. And the romance between them is so beautiful. Very slow, as the circumstances kind of state it's going to be slow, but it is richly, deeply romantic and just so incredibly moving and beautiful. I love this book so much. This whole series is great and very underrated. This one is one of my favorites in the whole series. So, all right, my friends, there you have it. Those are my top recommendations for slow burn romances. I hope you all enjoyed this list. If you have made it this far, please feel free to leave me a purple heart. If you've made it this far, a purple heart emoji. And if you have a slow burn romance recommendation for me or for anybody else, please feel free to leave that in the comments as well. We'd love to hear them. Thank you so much. And I will see y'all in my next video.